Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be simplifying a trigonometric expression. We have 2 times sine x to the 6th power plus 2 times cosine x to the 6th power plus 1. And that is divided by sine x to the 4th power plus cosine x to the 4th power. Even though we don't use parentheses uh, when we raise a trigonometric expressions to powers, this is very standard. So sine x to the 6th power can be written like this as well as like this. But the first one is more common. It's practical. So here's what we're going to do. I believe there's more than one way to solve this problem, even though uh, I just, I'm just going to present one method, but we can possibly talk about a, you know, um, a second approach or at least some ideas I can throw in there. And please let me know if you have any other ideas or any other solution methods. So here's what I'm going to do. I want to get the sum of sine x to the 6 and cosine x to the 6 in the numerator. It should be a well-known expression if you are dealing with trigonometry. One of the most important identities in math, and if you tell me in trigonometry, I think it's the most important identity. That is sine x squared and cosine x squared, or I should say sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. This comes from the Pythagorean theorem. There's also other ways to prove it, so on and so forth. But this should be well known. Now, how can we use this to get what we want? We need the sum of 6 powers and we need the sum of 4th powers. By the way, I forgot to tell you. What kind of expression are we expecting to get at the end? If this was a multiple choice, multiple choice, if this was a multiple choice question, it would be a little easier because you would know what to expect. Sometimes we get numerical values, sometimes we get a trigonometric expression such as cosine x, sine x, tangent x times, uh, I don't know, secant x, something like that, or just secant squared x. So, depends. And let me not tell you what we're going to get. Uh, oh yes, uh, I thought of another method right away, but let me do the first method first. Okay. So I start with the sum of squares, which is 1, which is nice. That's a well-known identity, hopefully, and hopefully from now on, for if you didn't know that. And now I want to cube both sides. And the reason for that is simple. Uh, the motivation is I want to get six powers. And this is one way to do it. Obviously, you could also start off with sum of cubes and square it. But what do you know about the sum of cubes? Nothing. That's why we want to start with the square something well known. Make sense? Okay, so I'm going to use the formula for my a plus b quantity cubed. And remember, we also use this uh, with cubic formula. And my favorite is writing it this way. a plus b quantity cubed from binomial theorem can be written as a cubed plus b cubed plus 3ab multiplied by a plus b. I find it more practical instead of just doing the 3a squared b thing. I kind of write it that way. It seems easier to me. I don't know. Let's do it. A is in this case sine squared and B is obviously cosine squared. So I'm going to cube it. When I cube sine squared, it's going to become sine x to the 6th power. Make sense? Plus cosine x to the 6th power plus 3 times sine squared x times cosine squared x. And something interesting happens here inside the parentheses. I get A plus B, which is sine squared x plus cosine squared x. And since I squared or cubed 1, I got 1. Makes sense, right? Now, this is what happens, and this is fairly interesting. Sine squared plus cosine squared shows up again inside the parentheses. And we know that it's equal to 1, so we could totally forget about it. Just multiply anything by 1, you get the same thing. And this is what we get from here. Sine x to the 6 plus cosine x to the 6 plus 3 sine squared x cosine squared x equals 1. Again, this should be a well-known identity. If they ever ask you to find the sum of 6 powers, you should know that it's equal to 1 minus 3 sine squared cosine squared. So a possible test question could be, they give you sine x times cosine x. Let's say this is equal to 1 fourth. I don't know. This is probably a special angle. And then they will ask you to find or evaluate this one. Notice that with this identity, it's going to be super duper easy. That's why this identity is also very important. Anyways, so I'm going to leave it at that. But since I do need the sum of two six powers, I want to isolate that. So I want to isolate this part. Let's go ahead and subtract. 
the other part. So we get sine x to the 6 plus cosine x to the 6 equals 1 minus 3. Oh my god, I should be rushing. My 3s look weird. 1 minus 3 sine squared x cosine squared x. So that's an identity that I will be using for sure. Let's save it for now and focus on the fourth powers. What do I need for the bottom? I do need the sum of two fourth powers. In other words, I do need to find an expression for this so I can simplify my expression. Okay. How do you express this in terms of something else? And hopefully in terms of sine x times cosine x because that will be helpful. So here's what I can do. Start with the same identity again because that's precious, that's important, that's powerful. And then this is equal to 1 as you know. And then square it instead of cubing it this time because you need the sum of fourth powers. Doesn't that make sense? So if you needed eighth powers, you would raise both sides to the fourth power. Now you know what to do, hopefully. But this is an easier one, sine x to the fourth plus cosine x to the fourth. Again, my favorite way of expanding these things, plus 2ab sine squared x cosine squared x. And that's equal to 1. Since our goal is to isolate to sum of fourth powers, let's go ahead and subtract 2 sine squared cosine squared. So this gives me sine x to the fourth plus cosine x to the fourth equals 1 minus 2 sine squared x cosine squared x. Okay. So I got another equation. Let's go ahead and highlight it or box it too. Now I got two expressions. I don't know if you can see both at the same time. Let me go ahead and put them together. Let's go ahead and move this guy down. Um, it's kind of too lazy to write it again. Here we go. Okay. It also brought down the 4, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. So we could probably do a little touch on that one. Okay, there you go. So now we have these two expressions. And what was the original expression? Don't forget, don't lose focus of the original one, right? So we are supposed to simplify this. 2 sine x to the 6 plus 2 cosine x to the 6 plus 1 divided by sine x to the 4th plus cosine x to the fourth. This is what we're supposed to simplify. So let's go ahead and plug it in. Easy, right? So we're going to take the second expression and multiply by 2. That's going to give us 2 minus 6 sine squared x cosine squared x. And then I have to add 1 because there's a 1 there. Divided by sine x to the fourth and cosine x to the fourth, which is this one. 1 minus 2 sine squared x cosine squared x. Awesome. Hopefully you got the idea, but don't leave yet because we're going to talk about something else. 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 minus 6 sine squared x cosine squared x divided by 1 minus 2 sine squared x cosine squared x. Allow me to say, do you see what I see? Okay. Hopefully you do. We're going to factor out a 3 in the numerator and that's going to give us the denominator. And guess what that means? We're going to end up with a numerical expression as long as the denominator is not zero. Of course, we have to have that restriction, but the answer in the simplest form is equal to three. So this tells us something. We have an expression we're trying to simplify, this one, and we are kind of doing a lot of algebraic manipulations, like kind of, you know, too much trouble, but couldn't we replace x with something? Yes. And no, if you know that the answer is going to be numerical, for sure, let's say the choices give you all numerical answers, you have an idea, or the problem says, hey, find a numerical value, whatever, something like that, right? So now if you have an idea, you're sure, then you can do it. For example, you can say, hey, suppose x is equal to pi over 6 or 30 degrees, right? And then you can just plug it in and guess what? That's going to give you the exact same answer. Please try it for yourself and let me know if you get the same answer. And this brings us to the end of this video. I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.